Have there ever been moments in your life where it's really difficult to consider or to even care about anybody else's needs or well-being because you're going through a crisis of your own? I understand that. And I know from personal experience, however, that when you give to others, the more you have to give. Whether that's money, when yours is looking a little funny, whether it's time when you feel you have none and that it's fleeting day by day, or whether it's your talent when you definitely feel you might be not that talented, but I can assure you that you are on this earth because you have something to give, you can serve, you have a purpose, you are here for a reason. And I have brought along a friend and mentor to me who does just that. She comes from the music industry and now she's working within the film industry, but also she has an organization called the Fun Factory International. Yes, I am wearing this shirt backwards because there's nothing on the front of it, okay? But um, Milani Ishmael is someone who I am so grateful to have met earlier this year and we talk all the time and I cannot wait for you to meet her and for her to impart on you some of the same wisdom and knowledge that she does for me on a weekly basis. How you doing, Sugarfoot? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Well, we all thank you so much for coming to Alicia Behind the Scenes Below the Line. And this month we are talking, or not this month, this season or this series, we're talking about stewarding your finances. And I brought you on because earlier this year we met in not weird circumstances, but in circumstances where both of us were learning and both right. of us were giving in different ways. And right. this particular episode, I would like to discuss giving. And because when we um, met earlier this year, I came because, you know, I'm transitioning hopefully very soon out of costumes into producing. So mm -hmm. I came on as an intern and I met you. I had no idea what I had gotten myself into. And I'm not sure you did either. Right. <laughs> right. But, um, <laughs> we both met and I was very happy. And when I got there, I learned that your organization organized for us interns to come. So mm -hmm. would you like to introduce the Fun Factory International for us? Okay. Well, I am the CEO and founder of the Fun Factory. And we are a nonprofit that is set up strictly to support, I'm going to say young people, but I'm finding out it's just people in the area of art, music, film, technology, entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship. Yeah. So basically the arts as a whole, entrepreneurship as a whole, and technology like new trends. So we can, whether that's gaming or coding, all of those things that fall under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. So now you come from a music background, though. You were a producer as okay. well as a label owner. It's an industry where it might not be very customary for them to talk about giving to others. It's a lot of take, 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 both the in film industry as well as music. So mm. coming from that background, um, what made you decide okay, I need to start an organization for young people or for people in general. Um, where did that come from? It's actually, to me, the other way around. There's a lot of giving out, giving out, giving out. Mm. And there wasn't a whole lot of return. Then what started the Fun Factory specifically was I had this point in my life where everything, I had done so many things. And um, not that I was unfulfilled. I just knew there just had to be more. So I went on a fast. And as I was coming off of that fast, somebody asked me, they said, if you could do anything, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Money's no object. You know, you didn't have to worry about anything. And the first thing I said is I would have a church, which is crazy. Because you said that? I did. I'm a, I'm a preacher's kid. I grew up in church. That's like the last thing that I would ever think would come out of my mouth. Right. Yeah. But it came out so fast and so clear and so 
so with so much conviction that I was like, I totally would have a church. And I said, um, but it would have to be like the funnest church ever. Yeah. You know, because yeah. my visual of church was just kind of like sitting there. I was bored. You know, there wasn't, you know, a lot to do that I considered fun. Mm -hmm. And so I said, no, it's, it's, it's gotta be fun. It's so it would be like a fun factory. Okay. And I it just kind of rolled off my tongue. And that was probably a year went by maybe almost another year. Mm -hmm. But during that time frame, some of the young people in our, whether it was coming in and out of my home, knew my children, mm -hmm. we knew them, they were in close proximity or related somehow, you know, one degree of separation, um, very tragic things happened. Um, okay. One one little girl, she's 19, volleyball player, some guy just got mad, shot her in the face, mm. shot her four times, like no regard for her life. Yeah. Uh, and then another young man, he was on leave, he was in the uh, Marines, came home to visit, went to a party, they shot up the party, the club, he was the only guy that got hit and he was killed. Hmm. And then um, another young man. And then my son, one of the children that was at my house a lot, he knew my children. They all went to school together. There was a, a bad situation that happened about two blocks from my house, Christmas Eve, I believe it was. And I had just seen the other young man who lived on the other side of town. I had just seen his mother. Mm -hmm. And we were like, yeah, we got to get together and, we, you know, we're going to pray for each other's children. And um, I saw the young man. Yeah. And I was laughing with him. And then I was uh, I happened to be in Atlanta and I opened up Facebook and I saw his face and they said that he was killed. Mm. And it just it wrecked me. Like, yeah. I just was like I, I, I was in a state of shock. Mm -hmm. And. You know, I, for some reason, I had a really, really bad feeling because it was two blocks from my house. So I had right. a sense that, oh, my God, it, you know, I just felt like one of our children, children, our children you yeah. know, and and, that, and when I say our children, it's like not my, you know, my son, my, you know, like that, but yeah. these children that I consider like children, you know, yeah. they're, you know, so. I just had a really bad feeling and, and, you know, the, the young men were on the run for, I guess about 10, 12 days. And that feeling just would not go away. And when they told me which young man it was, I was devastated. Mm. I was just, I think I cried for probably eight, nine months. Wow. I just, did yeah. not, the, the burden of it feeling like I knew these kids, I knew them since they were small. Yeah. So, you know, I was just like, no, this would just, I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, you know, I knew I wanted to do the fun factory. I knew that that church thing was, was ringing in my head. Mm -hmm. And I ended up going like to the chamber of commerce. And, and I was like, you know, I, I want to do something. And this was probably like a year before that. Yeah. He said, he, he called me back. He said, you know, I think what you want to do is a nonprofit. And mm. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I never thought about that. Mm. So I, he said, well, me okay. Little, if you didn't okay. think about that, what did you think a church was? I, you know what? You know, it's funny. Our church was never a nonprofit, the church I grew up in. And I'll tell you why. Because my pastor, and I went to two churches, not my dad's church, but my, my church, my other church that my mom went to. Uh-huh. Um, he was very adamant about being able to do um, things that the government probably like financial empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, he was like, I'll say what I want to say. Mm. I, I, I'm not going to be subject to you telling me what I can and can't preach. And But yeah, so there was a lot. My purpose is people mm -hmm. and my goal is souls. Mm. Simple mm -hmm. as that. And it just so happens that the things that I'm passionate about mm -hmm. align with my purpose, mm -hmm. you know, but it always comes back to 
you know, serving and helping. One thing that I am learning, um, probably around the end of last year, I told you this, that I was sowing seeds, like giving money here, giving money to somebody or to a church or whatever. And I noticed that it really had no effect on me. It didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel bad. I didn't, I wasn't bothered by how much I was giving. And I was like, huh, that's, that's odd because usually if I'm going through something really difficult, I will give because it's almost like I release something. Mm -hmm. And so when I noticed that, I was like, I don't think this is it. And so I started like praying and asking God. And it was just like, hmm, you need to give more of your time. Mm -hmm. And when I thought of that, I was like, whoa, like you said, how something grips you. I believe that's the Holy Spirit. It was like, huh, I never even thought of that. Obviously, time is probably the most limited thing that we have on earth. It is the most limited thing that we have on earth. Um, and so I was like, I never thought about my time as giving or serving others. Like, yeah, you know, it's giving, but that's just not what you're taught. You're taught to like mm -hmm. give money. So mm -hmm. I wanted to have you on with the fun factory because that's literally what your organization did for us. I mm -hmm. went into that situation as an intern. Now, you know, I've been working in the industry now for about seven years. You so, are not an intern. <laughs> okay. So I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Honey. I don't right. know what this is. Right. And I was very, very scared. But, and I drove and, you know, I'm used to getting flued out. This is in Champaign, Illinois. Not I'm coming flued from. Out. Yes, not I am. Flued out. Yes, I, I'm used to getting flued out. And so it was like, okay, can you drive here? I was like, you want me to drive from Atlanta, Georgia to Champaign, Illinois, where I don't know nobody on mm. the set. And mm. then probably when I was about three hours out, you called me. I had never spoken to you. I had never mm. met you. I didn't know anybody on that set. I was just recommended right. to go and do this. And I just heeded the call. Right. And when you called me and you um, checked on me, I think you called me like twice because you didn't even know I was driving. Right. And immediately I just had this peace because I was like, oh, wow, somebody is there who actually cares. Right. And then right. <laughs> and then when I get there, I don't know what kind of living arrangements I'm going to be in. I'm prepared for everything, oh, nice. okay? I am prepared right. for any and everything. And I was right. not going to tell my mom because she would have been stressed. She was already, like, timing how long it would take her to get to me. I'm like, right. I'm 30 years old by now. Right, yeah. right. But so then I get there. And it's this beautiful home, this beautiful Airbnb. And then we have like this little village of other interns, all of them. I think I think one of them was older than I was. But like we have this little village and every single right. night we would just have we would talk about everything. We would eat together. We would do we would be miserable together because, yes, we had. Yes. <laughs> But also with us, you were learning too, but you were mm -hmm. also in service to us. And I just, I was like, wow, whatever she is doing, I need to know because I mm -hmm. want to be part of whatever that is. So um, that's why one of the reasons I have you on, because mm -hmm. I think you in your organization show giving and serving in a way that um, a lot of people may not think about. Like we know that there are nonprofits, but to actually experience something like what you do with people, because you still obviously like now you mentor me. And um, also you have Christian, he wants to be what is Christian want to be a music producer or he wants to be a producer, right? Yeah, yeah, he, he, you know, first of all, Christian's MIT grad. So you oh. know, he's got like all kind. he is like, he happens to be very good at music, but he's also extremely smart. So he's probably going to come up with something that will probably change our world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, here's here's a little beat for you every right. now and then. You know how you see them right. uber rich people that just want to well, be he, DJs. He does the music for Alicia behind the scenes. No, yeah, he's oh, he's very talented, and and yeah. I didn't expect that from him, but he was like pulling his laptop of beats out every, every day. Like, night. check this out, check this out, check yep. this out. So yeah, yep. it's cool. Yeah. 
but it's like what the in my opinion what the fun factory does is sort of foster that mm -hmm. um even with rachel who wants to be a dp one day mm -hmm. she's around she's in new york somewhere on somebody's set and mm -hmm. um so we just all like we're all still really connected just from this one experience as mm -hmm. through your organization that i didn't even know i had signed up for but um so and wow. shout out to to Michael and Christine Swanson yeah. who allowed us to come. Like they didn't have to allow that type of you know thing to happen because because yeah. I mean that's like opening up your set. I've never I've been on a lot. Never. Of I've I never. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and 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 so like what they did and how they protected you guys. Uh, once we knew all the stuff that was going on, but yeah. I mean, they yeah. just kind of rallied around and they, they really, every day they were checking through me, they were checking on you guys to make sure you're cool. So, you know, shout out to them for even making that possible. That was such a blessing because we're on this call because of that. So I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. Grateful. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Michael and Christine Swanson are the producers Christine was um, the director, but mm -hmm. it was through their production company, Faith Filmworks. Yes. Um, why all of us were even on that set. And it was it was a great time. And like you said, we are all still connected from that. Mm -hmm. But um, for you, why is it important to give and to serve others? Just your personal opinion. You know, I really believe it's the heart of God. Mm. You know, I don't know that it's so much me when I get in self, because mm -hmm. you can give and be very much in self. And then that's when you see like the bitterness of people who get burned out mm -hmm. and they're like, well, I did all this and mm -hmm. y'all just didn't do look out for me. And <clears throat> so that's like the, the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And I think in its purest form, it really is just an attribute of God. Mm -hmm. he gave his son he gave his he gave everything you know yeah. for, and for humanity so i think that that that's just a characteristic of him you know mm -hmm. and um you know I, I i have been in situations where it's just as important to allow others to give to you Mm -hmm. you know because yeah yeah when that's unbalanced mm -hmm. um i don't i i definitely think that that is a recipe for disaster you know because you know some people they they give so much whether it's to churches to to the point of just complete sacrifice of self yeah and i've learned just like in the last couple of years like as much as you're a giver, you have to be able to receive. Mm -hmm. Like, because there's somebody on the other side that needs to also express that. And if you don't allow that, then you're really, that's not God's way either. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be, you know, this reciprocal thing that happens. Yeah. So, you know, so yeah, I, I, that would be my answer. It's just God's heart. Yeah. Do you think that there is a benefit to giving? Um, I do. Mm -hmm. um, we gave to the point of being very hurt. Mm. But whether it was church, whether it's just a disappointment of pouring out so much. When you say we, who are you referring to? My husband and I. Okay. You know, uh, we both kind of have that 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 vibe about us. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a time just not long ago that, and I, and I want to be honest, because I think it's important since you're asking the question, there was a time that I just really didn't feel like the benefit was there. Mm. I felt like, man, God, we shouldn't be going through this, or why is this happening? Mm. And um, you said, Give it, shall we give it? Press down, shake it again. Run it over, run it over. You know what I'm saying? Then there's another one over here, and there's another one over here, and I'm like, this is adding up, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, there was a time where I really, I questioned the benefit. 
Mm, mm -hmm. I really question the benefits. So I think you, you have to tell the truth about that part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think because there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Yes, it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there is a time to stop giving. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds giving in crazy. certain way. Don't don't yes. just giving in Even certain. If it's your time, like yeah. Sometimes you have to say no. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, uh, no, I can't give that. Like yeah. like when you've been so far over on one side, mm -hmm. that's not what God wants. So sometimes the giving needs to be to your own self, right? And yeah. it's not selfish. It's, no. It's, it's like, okay, pull it in for a minute because you're so emptied out. You're giving out of this, 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 there's, we're, ideally we want to give out of the abundance and the overflow. And then there's also the sacrificial, but it can't be just way over here and there not be any balance over here. So yes, there is a benefit all the way around mm -hmm. and, 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 Give to people, give to yourself, give to God. It's mm -hmm. like, yes, I do. Believe. Now I know that I kind of came out of that bitter place. Yeah. Because um, if you had to ask me that like <laughs> four or five years ago, I'd be like, oh, hey, no, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would have been hurt. Yeah. I would have hurt. And I would have had a totally different answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm glad you said that because. The reason I named this stewarding your finances, obviously stewardship is addressed biblically, but also in within the film industry, we have um, union stewards who work on every single production that you that you work on. And they are like the liaison between the crew and the um, product, the producers in the office. So like the UPMs, line producers, those people. And their job is to make sure that the rules are being followed, that um, crew is being treated properly that um, whatever they're basically the union representative when mm -hmm. our business agent isn't there. And I believe it's the same thing with in this season of stewarding your finances where we are, we find ourselves in these strikes mm -hmm. and a lot of people, they probably are out of money. They probably are out of a lot of resources, but I think, still think it's important, although you might not physically have the money. Um, I just would like to impart on people that it's still important to steward every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. And um, whether it's your, your finances, whether it's your service to others or service to yourself, like I'm going through a period where, um, like I said, with the whole time thing, I was just, I was always like, I ain't got no time. I ain't got no time. And so then I was like, well, no, I need to steward my time better. If I feel like this is what mm -hmm. God is calling me to do, then I have mm -hmm. to be obedient to that call. So something else, like you said, I can't give here because God is calling me to give here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm happy you said that. And mm -hmm. I believe that, oh, wait, no, you have um, your, my university, my court. No, what's it called? My university, so I, I have come, my my production company is called My Team Media. My Team Media, yeah. And through My Team Media, we're able to serve the Fun Factory. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it, they 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 mirror each other. Where it's like if I have a project that comes in, mm -hmm. I'm able to bring in young people. Yeah. Or you know merge it together. So we have I have courses that we're about to teach, and part of our course is finance. So I have a guy that has been in the financial sector. Mm -hmm. He's a financial planner. He's very mm -hmm. good at what he does. Mm -hmm. I'm not as strong in that area. I'm not going to lie. So I might be okay. calling you, okay. Alicia. You know, like for real, I'm, I may call you and have you like teach one of the courses. Um, no, really. you. you now, I ain't out here teaching. That's why I'm talking like, to you buddy but everybody has their strength if you ask me about hair i can say hold the clipper like this do that but i don't have i don't have it in every I area out. but for you to be so young and understand financial literacy in the in the way that you do it is more than enough to teach someone who knows nothing okay so i'm gonna call you for my university <laughs> 
And because I did your podcast, you're going to do one of my courses. It's not a podcast. We're going to work together with your YouTube, your, your show, you yeah. know, your it's Oprah Winfrey thing, whatever it is you got going on over there. Um, but yeah, so we'll have, um, we'll have it broken up where I, I will bring in different people who are able to speak to different genres and, you know, different sectors. And so, you know, I've got a friend who's one of the best engineers. So I may have some kids that need to learn about engineering. We can go in so many different directions in my university, but we have to like start here and, you know, financial stability 101. Yeah. And yeah. That's the goal. So what I have been actively praying about and asking God to give me wisdom mm. that I can impart that will make a difference in the situation. Like mm -hmm. I don't profess to know everything, but God does. So you know how we get off the phone, honey. You like to say a prayer. So go ahead and do it. All right. All right. <clears throat> I'm thinking. Go I'm ahead. Thinking. All right. All right. Well, gracious heavenly father, first of all, I want to thank you for Alicia and her obedience to open up this platform that we can come together and we can glorify you in our gifts, our talents, our abilities, our resources, our time, our talents, everything that you've given us to just take this moment and say, thank you. Thank you for allowing our lives to intersect. Thank you for being right in the midst of it all. Father, we just want to lift up every person that's watching and even those that aren't watching that are struggling during this strike. Those who are feeling hopeless, those who are feeling lost, those who are feeling like they do not know what to do next. Father, we just ask in Jesus' name that you would comfort their hearts even now. Even though we talked about a lot of things today, Ultimately, my message is that you are who you say you are. You are absolutely real. And you have shown me time and time again. And even in dark places, you have always sent light. So thank you for Alicia being a light even now as she talks about finance. And for those that are struggling in their finances, we ask that you would send them a blessing. For those that need help to understand things financially in terms of literacy, we ask that you would send the help. We want to be good stewards of all that you have given us, but we need your help in order to do it. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this show. Thank you that it's just going to get better and better and better and better. And that's it. Just want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.